Hi guys, Jordan from BNB Campers. Just going to do your hand of a video on your Vantage Soul. Um, <clears throat> so it's based on the, what I think is the 2.2. Uh, could be wrong, it might be a 2.3. I'll double check that. Um, so on the left hand side under the bonnet, we've got the washer fluid on the top left hand side, power steering fluid, and engine coolant. Next door to that, you've got the brake fluid attached to the servo just behind it, the um, engine oil filling point, and the engine oil dipstick. Because this fan's got air conditioning, it does tell you what um, sort of uh, gas to put in it. So that's the number there, and how much to put in and all that sort of thing. Because this is based on the silver body or the silver chassis, you've got your paint code there, 611. And the uh, chassis plate just there, telling you that it's three and a half tons. On the right hand side, we have got the air filter sits inside this box just here. And because the, um, oh, the fuel filter is just there as well, um, because the engine battery on these particular chassis sits under the floor in the cab, just in front of the passenger seat, you've got a positive terminal just there under this little cap and an earthing point or a negative terminal just here. So that's what that is. Um, so, Essentially what that means is that you can jump start the vehicle from underneath the, underneath the uh, bonnet if you ever needed to. The bonnet release handle is just here inside the door, just there. Um, and I'll just see if there's anything. So you've got the swivel seat base on there. And the only other bit really to show you just here is that the diesel filling point is this one just here behind this silver door. The step that comes out just there is electronic. So it goes in nice and freely on the switch just there. These two switches aren't anything to do with anything outside. This is all just to do with the lights on the inside. So, you carry on round now. Step around this. Right, so at the back, um, just because I won't be able to show you once we're inside, we've got storage locker here on the left hand side. This center section here does pull all the way out if you want it to. Um, so you can release it with these little clips here and then take this out. You can also, if you want to, I believe. Um, take this entire thing off. If you don't want this here, and you want to use it as just a complete walkway there, then you can do that as well. That's uh, completely up to you. Next to that, we've got the gas locker. So you can get to that as well from the top, so as you can get the bottle in and out nice and easily. There is space in there quite cleverly for two of these six kilo propane bottles. So you can have one, one next to each other, so that when you run out of one of them, you can you know, switch over. Um, but to be honest with you, I've not actually seen this kind of layout before and it's really, really clever uh, to have it like that. So um, to turn these bottles on, you go anti-clockwise around to the left, that turns it on. Clockwise around to the right, turns the bottle off. Um, I'm gonna leave it on for the minute because I'm gonna show you a few bits working on the inside. Uh, the actual um, regulator here, you don't have to do anything with that whatsoever. Um, all that you need to know really is that this little section here is for our testing point and this bit here is also for that testing point. So all you need to do, or all you need to know really, is that you've got five years on the date, there you go, 2023, so you've got till 28 to replace this pigtail hose. And when you come to running out of a gas of one of the bottles, you undo this nut just here, take it off, put it onto the other one, and just sort of nip it up basically, just give it a good little nip up um, because it's only sort of brass or copper, whichever one it is, and so you know, nice soft metal. So um, if you really over tighten it, then you know you will just shear the thread. So um, that is that. So, like I said, I'm gonna leave that switched on for the moment, but I'm gonna uh, close the lid down like that. So that's nice and neat there. Um, on the off side here is where the most of the kind of uh, workings of the van are, if you like. 
So this just here is the vent for your um, boiler or the heater. Let me just double check which one it is because that is actually where the heater is, but I reckon it's for the boiler. Let's have a C. Um, yeah, okay, so that vent on the outside there. Oh, actually it's for both. They both link up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just trying to work it out. Which one goes to there? That one goes to there. Okay, yeah, so that's the boiler vent. Okay. So, this vent just here is for the boiler. So when you have the boiler lit up on gas, you should be able to feel hot air coming out through the bottom of this if you hold your hand underneath. Um, try not to touch it for too long after you've had it on for a little while because it will get very hot. These two down here are obviously your fresh and waste water drain offs and you've got one of these little twist, you know, twist knobs on each side to drain off whichever one you want to. They work really, really well and it's nice to have them both in the same place as well. It's also quite a clever sort of idea. This next locker is the toilet cassette locker. You can see that. So you press both buttons in at the same time. So that one in and that one in. You do have to do it at the same time. The cassette itself is really simple. Just lift up on this little green tab and then the whole thing should come out. All you need to know from there really um, is that you empty it out from here, from this little cap just there. When you're physically emptying it out, you should be holding down the little green button at the back. And when you have emptied it out, your blue fluid goes back inside of this um, before you put it back in. That is about it really. Okay, uh, the next one is the fresh water filling point. You can see I've got the cap off for that at the moment because I just filled it out with a bit of water. So that's where you put your fresh water in and the hookup point next door to that as well. So that is where you put your hookup cable. Um, the hookup cable will give you access on using anything sort of 240 volt powered. Uh, so any main sockets, any the boiler on the mains, all that sort of stuff has to have the hookup plugged in for any of that. Right. So I'll just jump in now, show you around the cab, and then um, show you around the rest of it. So the cab is actually a really nice high spec in the cab. Um, I've just got the keys down, one sec. Okay, so. So um, you've got the air conditioning from that little switch just there. Um, hazard warning lights and you can lock and unlock the cab from just there. You've also got the six speed manual gearbox as opposed to the five where reverse is lift up on the back over and up to the top left. You've also got the cruise control stalk just there. So cruise control, you turn the entire cruise control system on and off from that little switch there and then you can press the resume button or increase or reduce the speed that you're going on the cruise control, just like that. You've got a single DIN Pioneer head unit, um, which looks to me to be a reasonably new one. Got the uh, USB point there, uh, auxiliary point there as well, and obviously CD. Um, so yeah, that's a nice new one. You have, by the looks of it, got, um, the air suspension it's like a kind of when it comes to these sort of air suspension systems it's not so much um like like having full air suspension like a truck would have um you know this vehicle will still have coil springs uh and shocks but the reason they have these they normally have them just at the back is because obviously you know when this van was built it wouldn't have been half as heavy as it is now. So having these, they're, they're essentially like airbag assisters. Um, so essentially all you need to do is keep your eye on them and make sure they stay at around two bar, which they both are. And if they start to drop, then you can just fill them up just like a normal sort of bicycle pump almost really. Um, but uh, yeah, so just just keep your eye on those, make sure they stay around two bar. And um, that, that really is all you have to do with it. It's not sort of a technical thing whatsoever. It just basically makes it a lot more stable and a lot more sturdy at the rear. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what that is. You've got the 
electric adjusting mirrors so you can select which mirror you want to move like that and then just use this as like a little joystick to move the mirror wherever you want to move it to and you've got your reversing camera so you know there's not much to be honest that this van the cab hasn't got if i'm honest there's not you know this is pretty much all the extras apart from maybe the asr button there but i don't really know exactly what that does anyway so <laughs> um right so i'll show you the rest of the vehicle now so as soon as you walk in you've got the control panel just there uh, to your left so it's a pc200 control panel and that will link up to a power supply unit in there so really nice and neat sort of systems in these cbe is the company that make all of this sort of uh, gear here and we did have an ih motor well we do currently have an ih motor home in at, at the same time which um uses a lot of the same kind of um control panels and p power supply units and all that and uh, in my opinion the cbe stuff is so, you know some of the best really i mean they use the cbe control panels and uh power supply units in concord um cartago all the big you know posh german brands they use them all in all of those so it's always good to have some quality units in here um so essentially what you've got it's a really simple little layout so you've got the main on and off switch just up here you've then got lights on and off and if it's got an awning light which i'm not oh yeah it does so the awning light switch is this one here and uh, the water pump switch so at the moment because the water pump switch is switched on but the water pump isn't running and it's not doing anything that is a really really good sign and it means that we are completely up to pressure and that there's no leaks just on a quick side note i have just realized it is a 2.3 just so you know <laughs> um so the first thing you want to do if you want to come in the van and you want to heat the water up you want to get the van hot you want to use it properly um then the first thing you need to do is, is first off make sure you've got some water in the tank by pressing this button just down here so that tells us we've got 30 percent of the water tank full up and just so you're aware i reckon the tank must be about 100 liters the fresh tank because i've just put in about 30 liters of water and that's showing us 30 percent full so just a, you know just like a side note really um so make sure that you've got some water in the tank once you've done that turn your water pump switch on and just come to the, 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 the sink here and just pour the water through on the cold side and here the pump kicks in straight away we've got good pressure no air in the system just there on the cold now we'll turn it over to the hot also good pressure no air and i can turn that off the pump will turn itself off there you go so that means so so doing that and seeing that there's water on the hot and the cold side and also seeing that the pump turns itself off once you've turned the tap off means that there's absolutely no leaks and that you're up to pressure because that that pump there would not turn itself off unless it was completely pressurized um, and there was no leaks so doing that essentially just tells you that the boiler's full there's no air in the system and that you can go ahead and use the van exactly as you want to um, reason for that is if you tried to light the boiler up and there was no actual water in it it would essentially just overheat pretty much straight away um, so it's really important to just double check that you've got water in both of those um, hot and cold i'll explain that a bit more uh, in a minute so i've shown you the sort of main switches over here and the um, fresh water level the next one up is your battery levels so this one here with the little caravan symbol next to the battery is the leisure battery voltage so that's 12.6 press it again and we get a little van and that is the vehicle battery so 12.6 and 12.4 absolutely fine and in fact 12.6 on a battery that's got all the lights on the water pump all that sort of stuff is actually very very good um and it reminds me that you've got a solar controller and solar panel on the roof so it's um you know really really good van for sort of going off grid you know even at campsites absolutely perfect as well but i mean there's not much this van hasn't got to be honest 
um, and uh, again I'll, I'll show you more into that in a minute but uh, it is a very very nice van nice high spec um, you have got a large table up here just in case you weren't aware that sits in a little slot up there so it doesn't move around um, so yeah so that's those two there that's basically your fresh water and your battery levels you've then got temperature inside and outside and you can set the, the uh, timer from there as well I think um, but uh, there you go so that's a control panel as soon as you've got the power on and the water pump switched on um, you can go ahead and start you know firing things up if you like really um, in my opinion it's not you, you know don't have to do this but I would turn the water pump switch off every time that you're not using it um, the only reason I tend to say that is that for example if for whatever reason it doesn't happen very often but if for whatever reason one of the pipes just burst at some random point like any you know it's, it would happen in a motorhome about as often as it would in a house so you know very very unusual but if it did the very very last thing that you want is pressurized water pumping out of that pipe so if you're not using the pump at that time you don't need to have it on anyway but also if you know for whatever reason during the night or whatever a pipe burst and your water pump switch isn't on all that will happen is you'll get a little bit of water coming out of it and then it'll immediately stop so in my opinion if you're not actually using the pump you don't need to have it on if you are switch it on anyway that's just my uh my sort of view on it if you like um so uh what should we do next so the cooker so you've got a three burner hob at the top of the cooker here um and an igniter switch for that there um, you have also got the grill and oven underneath which works from the same ignition switch um, but you go in and round to the left for the oven and in and round to the right for the grill um, and that'll just light up with your ignition switch let's see if we've got anything underneath here no nope, just absolutely loads of storage okay so in this wardrobe i briefly showed you it um, you've got on the left hand side you've got a fridge isolator switch so if you turn that switch off there the fridge has no power to it now it is a compressor fridge which means it's 12 volt only um it's pretty much the biggest compressor fridge i have ever seen um but anyway so that's your fridge isolator switch if you ever needed it for the most part you can just leave it um, in the on position because you can actually turn the fridge on and off from inside but saying that it's probably easier if you set the temperature that you want in the fridge you know allow it to get really cold the first time and make sure that you're happy with the temperature and then just basically use the fridge by turning it on and off from that switch it's probably easier than reaching in and doing that every time so I'll just leave that on for a minute above that you've got the um, solar regulator or controller so you haven't got to do anything with that in fact there's not actually any buttons on it um, but essentially what that does is it regulates the power coming down from the panel and reduces it essentially to a certain voltage to go into the to the leisure battery um, so yeah that's that's just all it does really um, the next one you've got your fuse box and as I said that's a CBE system as you can see in the corner these both are so the fuse box, um, it tells you there's a little diagram above or below each one telling you what it does and what size it should be. So essentially, if you if you got into the van one day and realized that none of the lights were working, you could come in here, take this little cover off. Awning light switch, as you can see on the control panel, it's the same as that one. And what's the other one? These two, A and B. So if either, you know, if, if the lights weren't working, I'd just take these two out and check those. So, you know, obviously come to us if you get any issues, but in the same breath, if you're on holiday and you don't have somebody that can sort of look at it for you there, just have a little look in there for yourself. It's nice and easy. Uh, and that's why they do it. So it's just, you know, at the end of the day, a fuse is just a fuse. And if you carry some with you, then you can get yourself out of all sorts of trouble if you ever get you know a blown fuse somewhere you can just work out exactly which one it is and just replace it next door to that you've got your trip switches so these are for the mains and you know 
just like any household one to be honest it's not um there's nothing sort of technical about this um so it, you know if you if you plug the mains hook up in one day uh, and realize that nothing on it is actually working just come in here and make sure they're all in the up position and showing red um if they're down and showing green at the bottom there it means it's off so we turn the fridge off and that is what's in that cupboard so quite an important wardrobe to be fair um got anything okay so absolutely loads of storage in there as well loads of cupboards and drawers um i would imagine that these are to make up the bed which i actually pretty certain they are so basically you take these three out here and put them across this gap here from one side to the other all the way up to the end and then you can just pull your cushions out and that'll make your huge double bed at the back here um so yeah that's nice and easy i'm actually liking this van more and more as i'm going through it to be honest um so um the next sort of most important bit i will go through the bathroom with you in a minute but um you've got this whole section here now this might take a little while to run through but um so essentially what you've got is boiler stuff heater stuff and then this is a solar tester like a, a voltage tester but i just need to work out what that button does <laughs> So I, I didn't do the habitation check on this vehicle, so I'm just sort of working it out as I go on a few things. Um, let's, have, let's see. Does that turn the lights on in the bathroom, perhaps? If not, I'll have to work out. Oh yeah, there you go. So lights in the bathroom are from that switch, just there. Solar test. You've got 12.3 in the battery and 2.4 amps coming in from the panel. Okay, so um, both the boiler and the space heater are um, gas or electric, so you can use them on either gas or electric, which means that, you know, if you're wild camping, you can use everything on the gas, you can, you know, you can get the, the boiler, the hot water on, you can get the heating on, all via the gas, um, and also saying that in the same breath, you can also have your um, fridge working as well, because that's 12 volt. So you can have that running at any time, really. The only thing I will say about that, before I get into this, the only thing I will say about the fridge, um, which I always say about the 12 volt fridges, is that you do have to bear in mind, um, these, these 12 volt fridges do draw a lot of power, to be honest. Um, once they're actually, when they're getting themselves cold, they do draw a hell of a lot of 12 volt power. Having the solar panel on the roof really, really helps, um, but, what would be even better is if you had a hookup cable plugged into the van, the battery charger would keep everything back, you know, charged up whilst you're using this fridge. Um, at least just to get it cold, it would be ideal to have a hookup plugged in. If you don't have access to that, it's not a problem. As I said, to be honest with you, we've actually had this fridge on overnight and it works. You know, it's not draining the battery out whatsoever. It's all good. But, you know, if it was in my opinion, I, I would try my best to have a hookup cable plugged in all the time that I'm getting this fridge cold. And again, as I said, after an hour or so, once it's actually cold, you can, you know, it's fine. It won't use too much power at all. Um, but uh, I will just, you know, I just like to mention that they do draw a lot of power from the leisure battery. But as I said, the, the solar panel on the roof is working really, really well. So to be honest, it's kind of like drawing power from there and then replacing it with the panel. So it's, it's you know, free power almost. So, um, Right, so the space heat, we'll start with the space heater. Um, you've got this one here on the right hand side, which is essentially just a um, temperature gauge. Um, nothing more, you know, nothing more technical than that. It's just temperature. Um, and on the left hand side, it's kind of like what you want the boiler, want the space heater to do. So if you turn it once to the right, you basically just get a fan. All right, so straight away, you can hear it's just blowing out cool air basically just just cool air so that's not heating it's just cool air if i go one more to the right the space heater will stop for a few seconds and then it will light up on the gas assuming that you've got the gas switched on in the cupboard all right so 
turning it all the way to the right there will light it up on the gas. Now, another thing I will just briefly mention is that if it's really hot outside, the thermostat will recognize that and won't allow you to use the, the heater. So if you ever find that it's you know too hot outside for it, then it just won't work. Obviously straight away there, you've seen the green light come straight on. So that's telling me that it has lit up and then it's gonna start warming up straight away. So that's how you use it on the gas. So go back to the middle there, turn it off. Now, if I had the electric hookup plugged in, I could go one, two, or three to the left. And what that does is it basically uses electric element or an electric element in the, in the space heater there to heat the van up. So instead of lighting a gas flame up and, and getting the heat from there, it, it basically warms up an element. So that will only work, as I said, if you have the electric hookup plugged in. In my opinion, I wouldn't use it down here on number three because it will use too much power. Um, if you imagine, if you're plugged into a 13 amp uh, camping pole at a campsite, if you use that number three there, I'm pretty sure it works out to be about 10 amps. So you only be left with about three. And uh, you know, that's not really a lot to be honest. So if I was you, if you're gonna, lose, if you're gonna use a heating on electric, just use it on one or two. So that is the space heater. For the most part, to be fair, people will just be using it on their gas um, because it's just a little bit easier. But uh, there you go, nice and easy. The next ones above that is the boiler and it's a Truma combi boiler. Oh, actually, it's not a combi. Saying that, scrap that, it's not a combi. <laughs> so, the, the, yeah, i get my words mixed up a little bit today because most of the vans have got a combi boiler. Instead of having the, the separate heater and, the, and boiler, you'd have a combi, which is both. But um, because you've got space in here for both, it actually does work out better having the separate heater and the separate boiler. Um, anyway, it's a different story. So the boiler itself, as I said, it's a Truma boiler. And essentially how it works is in the same way as this one, you've either got electric or gas. So if I had the electric hookup plug in, plugged in, I could press this button just here and that'll just immediately start heating up the water inside the boiler. And if I didn't have the electric hookup plugged in and I want to use it on the gas, I would turn this once to the right and then select my temperature. If you listen now, the boiler will light up. Any minute now. There you go. So that noise just there was the boiler lighting up in the gas. And that's how it works. So you've got, as I said, 33 to 70 degrees on this uh, dial here. Bear in mind that the hotter you get the water inside that boiler, the longer you can make it last because you can, you know, adjust the tap to, to use less hot water because it's already hotter, if that makes sense. Um, so that's how you can do that if you want to. But yeah, so boiler on gas, boiler on 240 volt electric, heating on the gas, heating on 240 volt electric, temperature gauge for the heating, temperature gauge for the water. And there you go. So I'll turn that off. After about half an hour or so of the boiler being on, on either one, you'll have hot water at the taps. Um, it might take about an hour to actually com get completely, completely hot, but uh, half an hour is usually a pretty good sort of, you know, amount of time to wait. Um, so, um, yeah, so going on about the uh, stuff I was saying about earlier as well. So having the pump here is a nice way of being able to show you something. So the reason why, uh, as I was saying earlier on about the, 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 the tap, drawing the water through the tap on the hot and cold. Essentially, the reason why that works is you've got this little pipe just here, which goes down into the tank. Um, and well, either that one or that one, whichever one it is, probably that one over there actually, because it goes through the strainer. Um, but anyway, so, you know, you've got the water pump draws water straight from the tank. Um, the reason that you have to draw the water through the taps on hot and cold is because the cold side is easy um, it just draws straight from the tank through the pump and then goes straight to your tap. Whereas the hot side, 
comes straight from the tank, through the pump, then through the boiler, and then to the hot tap. Okay, so if this boiler isn't full of water, you will not get any water coming through the tap. Just It just can't happen. Um, this boiler has to be completely full. All 10 litres of water has to be in this boiler before you'll get any water coming through the taps. So that's just the best way to double check that it's definitely, you know, full up. On the same subject, you've got this little yellow tab down here, which at the moment is laying flat. Um, when it's laying flat like that, that means that the boiler will accept water um, and that you can basically fill it up. If it's upright, it means that any water that goes to the boiler or any water that was in it will just drain straight onto the floor. And the only reason you would ever do that is if it were coming up to winter and you weren't going to use the van, you absolutely have to drain the, the boiler out of this water by lifting that up. If you don't drain the boiler out of this water, essentially what will happen is the boiler will freeze up inside and all the pipes around it and all the pipes inside of it will expand and crack. And then you're going to be in a world of trouble, basically, because it's uh, it's not a cheap thing to replace. So just bear in mind that you do have to uh, drain out the boiler before winter if you're not going to use the van. And the last thing under here is that you've got your gas isolator taps. So you've got the boiler, heater and the cooker. So if you wanted to isolate the gas from any of those appliances, you can just turn them 90 degrees so they're running um, horizontal. And that's it. That's how you isolate the gas. All right, so the last bit I want to show you is just the bathroom. So it's a little bit messy in here. Uh, doing the hat check, you've got these uh, skylights that get a little bit full of dirt sometimes. Uh, so all you've essentially got in here really is the sink here. You will notice that the tap is exactly the same, but you don't have a drain hole in the um, actual sink itself. Reason for that, if I just show you, fill it up as much as you like. Lift this up and pour it down the back. And that is how you use the sink. That's how you drain it away. You've essentially got little drains in both corners and it just drains straight down into the waste tank. The toilet is just as simple. The actual drain into the cassette is this handle just here. So just open, it, close, and then the uh, flush fluid pumps around. If I just turn the water pump switch back on, because I turned it off. There's the flush. That's it. That's how you use the toilet. So, um, I think I have shown everything I can on the van. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. If I haven't, or if you think there's something you would like to go through again, or anything you think I've missed out, just let us know. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon to catch your van. Thanks very much.